All right. Hey, guys. Thank you guys for joining me. Man, apologize for my looks. I know I'm dirty. I, hey, if you could be here, my breath probably smells bad, too. But it don't matter, guys, because you know what? I'm glad to be back. You guys can't smell me through the camera, so that's okay. I've been out there sweating and working and doing stuff for the last few hours and then had a bunch to do this morning. But I'm so glad to be back, guys, and I've got a new video for you on First Kings chapter three all right guys i know it's been a minute i thank you for your prayers i thank you for your continued support guys um god is good he really is he's got great things for each and every one of us guys and um you know we all know that struggles will come and we can't control everybody else what we can do is well, that's crazy well <laughs> Well, what we can do is we can control our own walk and we can control the love that we share with others and we can control sadly the love we don't share with others and and so I just want to thank you guys for your continued prayers and um, your kind words and kind comments and especially if you're a newer viewer to the channel I want to thank you for putting up with these slightly odd times and stuff. As always, I would encourage you guys to dig into my library on a day when I don't get a new video maybe uploaded, or if I just get a story video uploaded and that doesn't really nourish you, please feel free to dive into some of that other stuff. With that in mind, guys, let me hush up my mouth. Let's get into some prayer, and we're going to look at 1 Kings chapter 3, all right? Heavenly Father, we want to come before you today, Father God, from a place of gratitude and a place of thanksgiving and, and from, from hearts that just want to praise and want to worship you, Father God, for all that you have done, all that you do, and all that you will do, Father God. We thank you for the glorious gift of your Son. We thank you for the, for the gift of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, Father God. God, we thank you for your daily provisions of faith, strength, grace, mercy, and everything that is worthwhile, God. We thank you for the beautiful nourishment of your daily word, Father God. We thank you for the chance to fellowship with one another over something like YouTube or Facebook or whatever it is, to be able to lift up your name and lift up the love that you have shared with us, Father God, and to shine it out to others. Father God, I would pray for a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Please, Father God, make this video a nourishment for us, Lord, and please allow it to catch the attention of anyone out there still being misled by the lies of the enemy, by the lies of the world, by the lies of the flesh, by, by addictions and lust and perversions and appetites that are not good, Father God. Let us, let us offer up your word, your will, and your way as an alternative to that, that people could find what we have found at the foot of the cross, Lord, victory, purpose, love, rebirth, and everything that is worthwhile. Father God, we pray all of this in your holy, heavenly, mighty, and righteous name. In Jesus' name, amen, guys. Somebody out there shout amen, and let's get into 1 Kings chapter 3, all right? Solomon requests wisdom is the little subheading on mine, guys. <clears throat> Verse 1. Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall all around Jerusalem. Meanwhile, the people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of his father David, except that he sacrificed and burned incense at the high places. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there. For that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? And Solomon said, You have shown great mercy to your servant David, my father, because he walked before you in truth and righteousness and in uprightness of heart with you, you have continued this great kindness for him, and you have given him a son to set on his throne as it is this day. 
Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people, too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil. For who is able to judge this great people of yours? The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, Because you have asked this thing, and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have asked riches for yourself, nor have asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there has not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. And I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. Then Solomon awoke, and indeed it had been a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, offered up burnt offerings, offered peace offerings, and made a feast for all his servants. Now two women, who were harlots, came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I arose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, The one says, This is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other says, No. But your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, Bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king, and the king said, Divide the living child in two, and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, O oh Lord, O oh my Lord, give her the living child, and by no means kill him. But the other said, Let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him. She is his mother. Oh, I got goosebumps on that, guys. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered. And they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. Guys, there is something breathtaking about the wisdom of God. I ain't even going to lie. When I read that right now, guys, I got goosebumps. And you get that sometimes with Scripture. All right, let me get a drink and we'll get into this. All right, guys. All right, you guys, I am so pleased to be back to our regularly scheduled program and content. I am so grateful for your guys', for your attention, your thoughts, your love, your prayers. Today we get to jump back in to the normal stuff, back into the Old Testament with the book of First Kings. And up today, our daily bread is chapter 3. So let's look first at verse 1, guys. Now Solomon made a treaty with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and married Pharaoh's daughter. Then he brought her to the city of David until he had finished building his own house, and the house of the Lord, and the wall all around Jerusalem. Okay, guys, so the Pharaoh spoken of here is unknown. 
Like so many, his name is now lost to history. What we can discern from history, though, is that he was almost certainly, or quite likely, a ruler, in fact, one of the last rulers of Egypt's 21st dynasty. Now, Egypt had been on a downslide for sure at this point, but overall, on the world stage, they were still quite powerful and held quite a degree of, of power and prestige. And so the marriage... The, 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 the marriage being able to even have it be set up certainly speaks to Solomon's place in society as a whole, but also of the far-reaching prominence of Israel at this point in time, due largely to Solomon's father, David, and his uh, rule. Let's look at verse 2, guys. Meanwhile... The people sacrificed at the high places because there was no house built for the name of the Lord until those days. All right, guys, so Old Testament records point out that Israel, upon entering Canaan, they were supposed to destroy all of the hilltop shrines. They were to build a new temple, and until then, they were permitted to offer worship at divinely approved and appointed sites. Sadly, sadly, Solomon, once the temple was built, pushed ahead with worship and, 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 and even new construction at those aforementioned sites, directly violating. All of this is a direct and clear violation of the parameters outlined in Deuteronomy chapter 12. Deuteronomy chapter 12, guys. Let's look at verse 4. Now the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings on that altar. So here burnt offerings was the most common and widely offered type of offerings. They were used for both atonement as well as thanksgiving. Now during such a ceremony, the animal was prepared and burnt completely, minus the hide, which was set to be taken by the priest following scriptural guidance. Let's look at verse 5, guys. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, what shall I give you? This dream, to be clear, guys, was a vehicle by which God could deliver his direct revelation as opposed to to a vision that was symbolic in nature and in need of interpretation. It was the former, not the latter. Biblical and secular scholars alike agree that Solomon was right about 20 years old at this point in time. And now to be clear, he was far from perfect, but we can see in his replies to God's questions a certain level or mark of maturity that is desirable. Now, I did something, I put a little parenthesis thing here, and I made a side note, guys, and this is something that I found in my studies that I just wanted to share with you, just as a side note. And that is that this prayer, and, and, and God's reply to it, has had such an impact on many people throughout time, but particularly, centuries later, it had a great impact upon a man named Lord Melbourne, who called England home. Now, Upon the, queen, upon the king's death and the queen's arrival, Princess Victoria, who was proclaimed that she would be queen, Melbourne decided that he would read this chapter to the would-be queen at her coronation. The idea being that, you know, what it takes to be a great leader doesn't really change. Everything around a society may change, but those qualities that are needed to be a great leader, they really haven't changed through the years. I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was cool. Let's look at verse 7, guys. Now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king instead of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in. So these words point to both great humility, humility and great purpose. Though crowned, Solomon is full well able to proclaim his youth, his inexperience, and his need. 
And that's a wonderful thing. All right, guys, let's move along and look at verse 10. Oh, my finger's itching. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. So again, a standout character is in sight. When able, Solomon does not take the usual route, nor make the typical request. He seeks not long life, he doesn't seek wealth, and though young and inexperienced, he doesn't even seek the death of his enemies or those who would oppose him. He goes for something a little bit better. Heck, let's be honest, a lot better. And that really puts him in a place in God's heart. You know, we will learn in time that maybe he doesn't stay there, but it's a beautiful thing nonetheless. Let's look at verse 14, and thank you guys for letting me share with y'all. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. All right, so the bulk of these divine gifts are non-conditional. Not so with long life, which hinges, we see, upon Solomon's endless faithfulness to God. And sadly, spoiler alert, he will in time drop that ball. Let's look at verse 16, guys. Now two women, who were harlots, came to the king and stood before him. All right, through much of antiquity, and certainly in the ancient Near, Near East, where we're at right now in our story, a king was expected to hear and take on special cases and appeals. This was a key way in which a king, a ruler, a monarch was still directly responsible to the people. All right, let's look at verse 25, guys. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Not wasting time, this new wisdom is directly applied. It was a widely held tradition, guys, that, that should a determination of ownership not be able to be reached, then the disputed property should be evenly split. And, and so, what, what a brilliant and great use and application of this law by Solomon, all made possible by the wisdom endowed him by God Almighty, right? All right, guys, let's look at verse 28. It's going to be the last one I share with you guys today. Thank you for letting me. I'm so glad to be back and making new videos with you guys. And I can't thank you enough for your support, all your prayers and kind words. Let's look at 28, guys. And all Israel heard of the judgment which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer justice. So you may be thinking, you know, they saw the wisdom of God was in him and he would use that to administer justice, so why would they be feared of him or afraid of him? Well, it's not fear like we talk about today as we've often hit on. This is not the type of fear that comes from being scared, but rather fear like the way that the wise are called to fear the Lord. See, Solomon and his ruling point to a... I'm sorry, Solomon and his ruling here point to a depth of wisdom that's only available from God Almighty. No man alone is capable of such wisdom. Um, all right, guys, if you're not subscribed, smash that subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, or I drop a new video six days a week. It might not always be like this, guys, but I promise I'm always going to do my best to get content out there and keep you guys interested and nourished because it nourishes me too. Um, Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. If you have any prayer requests, any comments, any questions, any suggestions, any good jokes about this thing sticking up at the back of my head, put that down here into the comments, guys. Hey, I love you all so much. Father God loves you even more. Do me a favor. Go out there. Have a blessed day. Tell somebody you see how much Jesus loves me. <laughs> how much Jesus loves them. Keep me in your prayers and I'll keep you in mine. All right, guys. God bless.